Welcome to the Eternal Tombs walkthrough demo. Before we dive in, we wanted to give you a little background information on Eternal Tombs. Eternal Tombs is an MMORPG run by live staff members who we call Tomb Masters. You'll get to see the Tomb Master platform today along with a little session of gameplay. And you'll get to see uh, where we're at and what the system can do. It's completely new, unique, exciting, and incredibly fun. We can't wait to show it off to you, and we also can't wait for you to get in there at some point and play it. Um, there are incredible events and crazy, all sorts of crazy things that we've come up with for you to do. Um, Eternal Tombs has been in development for over five years, and in the past year or so, we've shown off a few trailers and screenshots and various other things, um, but it hasn't really been representative of the current product. Um, where we're at today is exactly what we're going to show you. This is 100% real and represents the current state of our game, even the bugs. Um, so we hope that um, you'll notice some significant progress, both in the visuals and in functionality. Honestly, we're a group of passionate hardcore MMORPG players who wanted to build something amazing. We hate where the MMORPG market has gone over the last decade. Uh, instead of epic sieges, intense boss fights, and deep exploration with your friends, we started having to swipe our credit cards to buy cosmetics for games that aren't even out yet, or um, pay to get faster experience, or um, you know, obviously all the pay to win stuff out there. This is, this is not where this genre should have gone. Um, this is the greatest gaming genre ever. And quite honestly, personally, it has helped me through some really difficult times in life. And I love this genre. It's, it's a huge passion of mine. And we, we're, we intend to innovate and push this genre back into the direction it should have gone to start with. Um, so that being said, Eternal Tombs is a microtransaction free game. There's, you cannot buy anything in the game, um, including cosmetics. Um, everything is earned in the game. Uh, exactly how it should have always been. And finally, this is, this is pre-alpha gameplay. Animations need polishing, assets need replacing. Um, some will stay because we're a small team. Um, the combat needs updates, UI needs to be cleaned up and a lot more. Um, but our entire world is built out and we're at a stage of enemy placement and game level polish. And we, we've poured our hearts into getting to this place. And without any external funding, without selling any sort of pre-alpha packs or cosmetics, um, we, we've used our own money and we poured our hearts into it, like I said. And so please take a moment to leave us a comment, share our game with your friends. It really means a lot to us and it's the motivation that drives us. Um, and thank you so much for watching and we hope you love what you see. So welcome to Mithir, the land of eternal tombs. And today I'm going to be playing the Chloromancer class. And what, we're in the city of Morstone right now. What I'm going to do is grab a quest here, and then we're going to port up to Northmere. And just from the portal in Northmere to Kilovith Woods is just a short ride. And Kilovith Woods is where we'll be killing some stuff today. So um, the land of eternal tombs is uh, focused on tons of secrets, mysteries, and various other things like that within the world. Um, as you can see there, there's a rock texture missing. We're doing all the bugs today, so you're seeing the whole thing, where we're at. Um, but again, going back there, the world is full of secrets. And so just to kick things off, we'll show you one here right now. Now you better have faction, the proper faction, or else you can't get into this area. This is a secret area with magic items for sale. Uh, some of these things are very illegal. And so this is a, just a cool little secret shop area. And you can see there's a bunch of vendors. Right back here, you can see there's a little quest we're going to pick up from this lady. And um, one thing I want to mention is we're, we're working on getting all the quests voice acted. So that's exactly what we're doing. So I'm going to pick this quest up and then we'll pour it over to our friend. Finally, I found you. Thank you. Thank you for being here to help uh, me. Continue to play the see, audio after accepting song. the quest because um, there you know, are that's not how many people who accept these quests so and you can listen to the story. It's deep, it's rich, far too dangerous, and I'm desperate to know what happened to him. A lot of great I can tell that he's so, dead. Some I others accept this quest. I need you to go to kill the forest and see if you can find his body. I've heard there's a graveyard in the northern area of the forest. He was influenced too much by dragon rocks. I saw the love of magic in his eyes as it flowed through him the first time he summoned it. 
I could immediately tell something. So one thing I wanted to talk about really fast is our minimal UI. We have a very minimalistic UI set up within Eternal Tombs. We're doing that on purpose because we don't like all the distracting health bars and damage counters flying everywhere. We really want to create an immersive experience for our players. Uh, but it still needs a little polish, so just keep that in mind today. We're going to come over here and we're going to buy a couple of components from Figbox, a vendor right over here, and then we're going to take... Um, we're going to ride our mount over to Kilovith Woods. Welcome to my shop. We have the finest hoggle broth components in Mythia. See you again soon. Okay, so big bot. We've got some of our components that we needed. And what we're going to do now is let's start our mount here. So we have a full mount system, and what we're going to do is we're going to ride over to Kill of the Woods. It's just a short ride, but you'll see along the way here, you'll see lots of different enemies, and you know they are fully breathing, working enemies. We have a ton of enemy variety for a ton of different combat um, styles and various things. You can see there, there's a worm bounced up, all sorts of different cool creatures within the world. And let's head on over into Kill of the Woods. Okay, so here we are within um, Kilovith Woods, and I'm actually going to adjust my, I actually just adjusted my mic volume here, so hopefully I can be heard a little bit better, especially through the combat. Um, one thing we're working on is getting rid of those loading screens. Now, we don't know if we can do it or not. We're still in the process, but it's complicated with um, raids and server load and capacity and various other things. So it's just, a, it's just an item on our list that we're working through. Um, I should also say that optimization is still underway. We've done some. Um, as you can see, the game will run run nicely, but we still have lots of optimization to do. So as we go through combat here, you'll, you'll maybe see a few things here and there that need to be optimized. I also want to say that this is a full-blown MMO RPG, PC only. It's not a co-op. It's not a mobile game. It's, it's a full living, breathing, persistent world that you'd expect from an MMO with thousands of people. Um, it's probably going to be um, about 200 gigs in size when it's all said and done. It's a very large world where, um, without spoiling too much, we're at around um, 30 zones different, along with different biomes. Um, it's a huge world, and you know, we're very excited to get you guys in it at some point here. Um, and like I said today, I'm playing the Chloromancer class, and in Eternal Tombs, we're waging war against the great wizard Dragnarox along with his minions. And Dragnarox brought magic into the world, and to make a long story short, um, summoning magic is evil. Um, Dragnarox used magic to twist the minds of people and warp them, uh, both physically and mentally. And so we're fighting to get rid of him and rid the world of those things. So, you know, and you can use uh, magic items, gear, um, potions, various other things like that. Um, or your abilities can use magic components, but you cannot summon magic from within yourself which actually allows us to create some really unique abilities. So a Chloromancer is an expert on harvesting uh, magic components in nature and using elements of plants, nature, fungus to attack enemies. And this really allows us to build some cool abilities and things you've never really seen in an MMO or really any game before. So for instance, one of the, you know, we have explosive mushrooms. We have poison mushrooms that grow really fast and disease different characters. We have um, magic um, honey or uh, beehives that explode and pour out, uh, you know, a, a toxic honey, uh, various other things like that. And you'll get to see some of these things as we venture through. But each of the different classes has all sorts of cool things that don't, uh, don't, uh, you know, aren't, related directly to spell casting. So yeah, you know, some people say, oh, that's, that's a huge bummer. I want all my traditional magic. And, you know, let me be clear, you can have that. So um, in Eternal Tombs, we're a very gear focused game. Everything you loot, craft, buy, trade, um, everything you put on your character is very crucial to your character. Um, and it, uh, magic is built into gear. So for instance, let me show this off here. This is my breastplate. I have a, this breastplate 
breastplate has an attachment, uh, a runestone attachment to it called Healing Wind. And I've crafted Healing Wind into this particular breastplate, which allows me to heal myself um, th with magic through, um, yeah, when I, when I click it. So uh, here's my hammer down here. This has uh, an empty runestone, empty jewel sockets, empty coatings, empty effusions. These are all things that you can attach to weapons. Um, and various other pieces of gear. You can craft not only the actual item, the actual breastplate or the, and the hammer, but also um, attach the, uh, or craft the attachments that go along with them. So it's very customizable and uh, yeah, very unique. The other thing I should mention as we talk about that is here is a crafting component. I'll loot some more. I'll try to harvest some of these as we go through the level here, but each of these, uh, each of our crafting components has characteristics and attributes associated with them. So you can see here, uh, it has different viscosity, magic, acidity, flavor, all sorts of different things. And all of the recipes and components for foods and potions and gear um, require different levels of um, quality for different things. Uh, you know, if you put a bad quality component into a recipe, you're going to probably get a bad item out of it. If you put good components in, you're going to get a much better item. There's all sorts of different, um, each recipe has all sorts of different outcomes based on the different um, attributes of your crafting components that are put into it. And yeah, we'll go over all of those things in later abilities. So I'll hit F5 and that'll be my quick hotkey to my breastplate heel here. As you can see, yeah, that comes with a little magic there, and there's a full, full system behind um, that with all sorts of different abilities. Same thing with enemies; they all cast very different spells and abilities throughout the system, which creates um, some really in interesting combat and some really cool things. So let's get up here. Um, let me. So, like I said previously, I'm a. I'm, the Chloromancers have lots of natural abilities with nature and plants and fungus. So I'm actually going to call up um, a pet here, a little fungus pet. Yeah, and there he is. That's my little buddy. He's going to follow me around and attack where I attack. And yeah, let's go over some quick combat right here. Um, your left click is always your primary attack, and your right click is always whatever hot key is at the bottom of your... Um, of your ability bar here. So as you can see, my secondary attack is currently my right click. And I can move around with uh, the Q and E keys to switch quickly between abilities and also use one through zero just to select the different abilities that I want to use. And that, this system is really unique, um, very cool, um, creates really intense, fast-paced action combat. And yeah, it's got a little bit of a learning curve, which we like. It, it creates some really cool abilities, though. Um, let's actually attack this guy. We're going to throw an explosive mushroom at him to pull him. This is a Death Seeker. Let's throw another one just to get him going. Whoa, whoa. Let's do... Oh, as you saw right there, that was a flare that kicked up from my um, proc on my ability. My ability got interrupted there. I tried to cast an ability. Um, so let's do this one right here. This is really cool as you can see it's a mushroom cloud where mushrooms will now start to grow on this guy and yeah he's going to um, be poisoned essentially through that let's see if kill him. ah we got him okay so let's some good loot there um, now you know this is not an area where I should probably be soloing so um, I'm gonna use f2 to drink some potions and get kind of healed up every time I fight um, otherwise I'm gonna die and I do not want to die so let's do that the potions have a little more healing power those ones in my breastplate currently does so I'm just gonna use those let's get this next death seeker right here To, oh, I'll say, okay, so what he did was he actually spit poison at me, which caused me to go blind. So that's a really good ability, uh, or really an example of a unique ability that this particular monster has. I'm actually going to switch to six. I want to throw an explosive uh, poisonous cloud of trees at him. So now he's kind of dotted with a set of, I'm actually also going to do this. Oh, no, I got that ability interrupted as well. 
Now, what's the what's root health? Oh, he's dead. Okay. And I am losing my health here. So let's heal up a bit. I have a bunch of these health potions that I did for this demo. So I'm just going to crack through them real fast so that I'm full health. I should have. Kill one of these Zilder fiends here. Let's pull him. I'm going to throw that. Oh, I missed. There we go. Okay. So I'm actually going to use a cool ability here called Morgue Box Asphyxiation. And this creates a poisonous kind of plant that will eventually explode and kill this guy. Let's see here. He is a tough battle, so this is not going to be easy. Oh, there's another. That flare off of my weapon there was um, my proc. So as you saw, um, yeah, that thing flew off, and that's the a bomb of the Ancients enchantment that I had on my character or my sword. So let's try to make our way through here. into the zone. Um, let's see. Okay, so here's some cool harvestables. So let's harvest these. And we kind of talked about um, the different properties within crafting, but let's get all these up if we hopefully don't get attacked by a bunch of mobs. Cool. So let's make our way this way. Let's do a little mining here. These are some harvestables as well. Cool. Um, oh, let's see, that guy, he didn't see me, fortunately. Um, you can see there it says you've taken minus 112 damage. This is actually a poisonous pond right here. So anytime I'm around the vicinity of this, it's going to poison me a little bit. So let's try to sneak past this guy. Oh, there we go. We're not going to get past him. That's fine. So I'm going to do a famous form of toxins. Dot I can use to just keep helping my damage. Do a volcano trim as well. These guys are tough. Oh, you know what? I forgot. Let's do Harbo's poison honey. That's a poison honey hive. Imagine and you can see the bees there attacking. Um, well, oh, phew. these guys are tough to so here. I'm surprised I have lived. I have run this demo a few times, to be honest with you, and I have died almost. I have died multiple times every single time. Um, but I keep. Uh, yeah, this time I'm alive. Got a good pet. Here we go. Let's do some potions. Okay, I think we're full health. Let's see if we can make our way. Man, this is just there's just a lot of monsters around here. These are all tough monsters too. Lots of mobs, lots of mobs. Let's see what we can do. It's a specific were bear that I want to attack up here. I think he's around here. It's a were bear witch that I want to get attacked up here. Yes, okay, here we go. I believe this. Yep, this is him. Okay. So this guy is beastly tough. So let's see here. He's going to cast something on me. Um, oops, nope. That's not what I'm doing. Now he's going to sit and cast a specific ability on me multiple times here. I'm not going to have him, I'm just going to kill him. Easier than I'd hoped. 
he didn't get off one of his abilities, which is really, really tough. So I'm going to come over here, open this chest up. There's a bunch of plat, so we're making our way through the zone here. Some cool tree huts. Let's go over here. There's a there's a specific type of enemy that's really, really challenging. Let's see if we can make our way over here. Oh, yes. Okay, here it is. So, these ruins don't know. Move over here how well you can see it. But if you see at the top of those ruins there, you'll see something hanging right there. Um, you'll see a couple of them. These are, a very, these are vikes. These are pretty nasty. They hit really hard and they hit really, really fast. So I'm going to try to sneak up here and just pull one of them. And like I said, this is, we have tons of different unique um, enemies and they have abilities and it's very, very, uh oh, I pulled two of them. I'm gonna die here, I can tell you that right now. They are unrootable, so I cannot root one and then kill the other. That's how, I'm gonna die. That's, that's how that's gonna go. That's okay. All right, so <laughs> there, I learned a lesson there. That's not where you pull those vikes from. So they'll head back to, um, their homes and yeah let's uh we'll stop the video and come back to our corpse here on me so I'm... okay so i actually ended up um, picking up a warbear witch here on my way back to my corpse and he which is great because he has several abilities that i wanted to show off here real fast let's do angel let's do mushroom and let's do um, oh, he's going to cast something on me here. Oh, yeah. Okay, so there's another good thing. So let's do... Oh, shit, shit. He's interrupting my life, so... Um, yeah, he takes a lot of mana to kill. As you can see, another proctor with my weapons. Four those so far. Um, finally, okay, we got him down. So I'm making it my way back to my body here. Um... Okay, so let's see where I'm at. Let's talk about corpses. Corpses drop whenever you die. It's uh, a set of, basically it's, you'll see a pile of bones. I don't know how well we'll be able to see them over here because it is, um, let's see, yeah, they're there. Okay, so it's a pile of bones. Yep, right there, as you can see. It's a little hard to see on this particular um, level because of all the foliage but yeah it's a pile of bones you can get res to your body if you have a, a group that you're fighting with you can also come back here and re uh, use different items to res yourself um, that just gets your experience back you lose experience every time you die so um, yeah and that is my corpse so let's actually um, instead of getting smoked by the vikes again um, let's actually just head over to um, the DM trigger that I wanted to show off. So let's head that way. Um, one thing I will mention is um, that this is just a sample run. I, I, I did nerf the um, health of this particular um, monster that we're going to spawn here. So give me just a second. Let's... I think it's right here. Okay, yeah. So what I'm gonna do is we're gonna pause the video here and we're gonna show you the Tomb Master system. We're gonna go through how that works. And one thing I wanna mention is that um, there are all sorts of different events that can be run. This is just a very, very small sample of that. Um, there are different, there's wave events, there's, you can have multiple mobs. Um, in different areas, you can do uh, decor. Um, there you will, you'll see the list as um, we go through the two master system. But there are so many different things that you can trigger in real time on this system. It's it's truly incredible. So let's uh, stop here and take a look at that.
Okay, so here we are within our Tomb Master system, and we're going to show you what uh, goes on behind the scenes with our staff members and what we're doing as you're playing the game. Now, what we're going to do is work our way over to the rock where we stopped at, and along the way you're going to see different things pop up and glow, and those are environmental triggers. And environmental triggers within these levels are specific, have specific special functionality. Um, related to this level. Now we can drop a trigger anywhere we want and run different events, but these are specific um, to this level and have special things. So um, let's go to our rock and you can see there's the first environmental trigger. There's another one. And we're going to come over to our rock here and we're going to open this one up. And as you can see here, this is our two master interface. Now there's a ton of different um, events and various things that we can do. Some of these are amazing and we are so excited to um, actually run them for you when the time is ready. But we're just going to show you one today, give you an idea of, uh, again, what goes on behind the scenes. We're going to hit the spawn trigger and we're going to call this Valrex, Kith, Spawn, Rock, Cave. Actually, we'll just call it something. Um, and what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to fill the rest of this out and um, I'm going to pause the video while we do that so that we can um, kind of hide some of the things and not spoil too much for you. So I'm going to pause the video now and then I'll come back in just a second. Okay, so we're back now, and I filled out everything for this particular spawn event that we're going to do. And I'm going to actually push this event. And you can see that the event went to the server. And now this server, or um, this system, will be reviewed by what we call the two master pilot. And this is a way that we can um, kind of control different things and scale different events. So we're going to hop over to that interface here real fast. Okay, so here we are within the two master portal. And what this area does, this allows our two masters who are acting as a pilot role within our staff to review events, um, to distribute events to different servers, to review the different servers, their population, their population density, and what the players are doing and how they're interacting within the game. Um, so let's sign in here. I removed the login for the purposes of the demo. And as you can see here, here are the different servers. Um, each of the TMs can go in and view the server information. They can uh, view the different populations and densities and things that are happening within that particular server. Um, but we're going to come over here to events. And as you can see here at the top, there's some pre-built events. By just simply selecting the proper dropdown and clicking this button, um, TMs can run full-blown server-wide game, I'm sorry, game-wide events throughout all of our different servers um, so that players can uh, enjoy those different events. And it's just very, very simple for them to run those easily and quickly so that uh, just to help um, with our scaling and also just giving players really cool pre-built events that we've built. Um, but we're coming down here and we're going to actually check out our dynamic event that we and as you can see, here's our Valorix Kiss Bond. It hasn't been reviewed. Um, the requested distribution is game wide, so that means all the different servers. And right now, it's actually only running on the server. So we're going to um, click on the view details. And here are the different uh, variables and what they are that were pushed to the system by um, our TM in game. And if we scroll down here, you can see. This is our uh, different servers. This has to be pushed to the server we were on because it needs to be reviewed first. And so what we're going to do is we can push that to our server that we were on. And we can also push it to another server. Now, like I said before, uh, TMs can go and view different populations and densities. So they can say, hey, um, Zilmer server is... Uh, you know, got a lot of population. It's got some good density within this particular area. And we're going to push this event to this particular uh, server. But as you can see right here, this recommended that this is event has is pushed to all servers. So we're actually going to do that instead. We're just going to push it to all of them so they can all run it. So we're going to click pushed event to all servers. And as you can see, it's been pushed to all servers. Now we'll hit back. And you can see now that our event is active. It's been reviewed. It's here's our title and the requested distribution was game. And now the actual distribution um, is game wide as well. So the dis game distribution has been completed. Now this event is running on 
all servers on all systems. So yeah, that's a pretty cool way to um, scale our different events. Now, um, like I said, we, we built all of this before um, the actual demo. And so we're going to pause this video and hop back over to the demo to show you what this event actually looks like when it's um, triggered by players in game. All right, and we're back now. Um, one thing I want to mention really fast is that we have basically nerfed this uh, creature here so that, uh, yeah, I can defeat it because obviously I'm having a rough day on <laughs> killing anything in here solo. So let's go ahead and kick off this. Uh, let's trigger this event and we'll see. Yeah, you can get a good taste of uh, some of the events within Eternal Tombs. You shall feel the wrath of my power in your veins. Bring forth Valorix, for he will drain your lifeblood. Okay, so like I said, um, we nerfed Valorix quite a bit. There is almost no. Uh, we put. Well, what? all of his health away so that I could kill him. But yeah, you can see uh, the event triggered, um, the effects happened, and yeah, we had a mob spawn. Now, here's where the environmental trigger component comes into it. There was a rock right there, and since this is an environmental trigger, this will have a special thing involved in it. And so we're gonna jump down here, and now we are in an area that is totally closed off unless that event environmental trigger has an event associated with it and it runs um, so yeah there are a million different um, the, the possibilities really are endless here um, we can combine combine events into a single trigger we can run um, all sorts of different things events and triggers and uh, many many different uh, scenarios Basically, um, you can combine things, you can open door, you know, areas. It's, it's very cool. The levels are full of uh, secret hidden areas that you haven't explored or seen before. Um, and we have tons of tools, like I said, on the back end to see population densities and various other things so that we can um, run these events. When we launch, we'll probably have a lot of auto trigger things based on population densities and you know, just trying to manage all of the things that come with a launch. In general and as after launch happens as things kind of chill out a little bit we'll be able to run more custom events tailored to specific uh, groups and guilds and various other things um, and like I said on top of all all of this we have one we have one time very specific events that will determine the future shape of the entire server so uh, these are going to be major story driven events that will really shape the game um, there are a ton of really cool things that we can that we have in store that um, change the environment, change the world, change the server. It's it's pretty cool stuff. Um, but again, that was just one little slice. We could of an event. We can do all sorts of different things, as you saw on that list. Um, where are we at with development in Eternal Tombs? So right now we're working on building out our gear and weapons and items and. Our various systems with that. We're, we're just deep deep into um, building all of those things out. Shortly after that, we're going to uh, continue on our polish. We've started our polish. We're, um, we're polishing out all of our levels, all of our uh, systems, combat. As you can see, some of these things are pretty un underpowered in their damage, and we're going to make sure it's in a release state. And then when we have uh, we have to polish and shore up the DM system. We have a lot of DM capabilities, um, but we need to go through and really, really polish everything. And after that, we'll ha we need to do some more testing and optimization. As you saw in the video, there's some, you know, some random lag hiccups and spikes throughout the system, but overall we have a decent frame rate. We need to go through and, and really optimize this, really make sure that it's playable. It's a hugely important thing and uh, make sure that our servers are gonna run the game really, really well. So yeah, with that being said, that kind of concludes our gameplay demo. And with that, um, yeah, make sure you give us a, a like or subscribe to our channel, sign up for the beta tests that are coming down, join our Discord, various other things like that. And yeah, just be a part of the community, share the game if you can. It's uh, really important and helps us a ton if you can do that. We're really, really excited to give you guys an MMORPG that just um, really 
create has a dynamic feel to it in a, in a in a huge world with tons of events, raids, things to explore, areas to unlock, secrets to find, and all sorts of various things. And so, yeah, with that, thank you guys for watching, and uh, yeah, appreciate all of your time. Have a good one.